Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been about forever and a half since I made a video, but here we are. And today we're going to be playing with marker buoys. Uh, if you fish from a boat, you probably know what these are, but if you don't, uh, if you're fishing on a boat and you see some structure on your fish finder, you throw these overboard and uh, marks your location so you can fish the shit out of that spot. Uh, let me show you what these are. These are best buoys. And while these do have some cool features, like the, the weight clips into it and it has these... Uh, Lego like slots so you can actually clip two of these together so they don't flop around on your boat. Of course the only problem is they never clip together because I don't know where they got the name Best Buoy but I don't think they are. I've had these probably, I don't know, at least 10-15 years and while they were great at first, let me show you the main problem with these. I gotta unravel it here. Alright, that took a bit to unwrap because these things hold like 70 feet of string on them but as you can see this is a pretty crappy design. They just have these two posts connecting both halves of the buoy. And this is what you wrap the string around. And what happens is you throw this in the water, the string gets wet, you wrap it back up, you end up throwing it on your boat deck, the sun gets to it, dries out the string, and it ends up contracting, squeezing these together. And it actually, over time, ends up cracking the ends here, which fill up with water, and these things sink. Uh, I did try to fix one. I put some flex seal tape on there, tried to seal it up, but it lasts for a little bit, but it doesn't last forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redesign these and make them better. And as you've seen from the thumbnail, probably this uh, video is just not about the buoys. So stick around. Okay, here we are in Fusion 360, and this is my overall design for the new buoy. It's basically the same as the best buoy because this flat profile is a good design, which actually keeps the buoy from uh, flipping over if there's waves or wind. And if it kept flipping over, it would just let more string out, and then it wouldn't be over the top of the position you marked. So it's actually uh, that aspect of things is a good design. What I wanted to fix was this center section. I'm going with a solid design throughout that, so that way if the string does contract, it won't deform anything. Uh, I'm not going to go over the whole design of this, but basically it's going to be printed in two halves because they're hollow and then glued together. And once that's done, it's going to be filled with expanding foam uh, because 3D printed parts, I don't care if you even print them at 100% infill, they're never going to be completely waterproof. So that foam will keep this thing from ever sinking. And I know what some of you are thinking, why don't I just drill out the best buoys and fill those with foam? And yes, people do that, and it does help the problem. I probably will do that as I'm at it, just to use those as a backup. But I like making stuff, so I'm making my own. So once that's filled, the caps are going to get glued on. And the only other aspect I changed is this weight. It's not going to snap in place. It's just going to be a loose fit, because if it locked in place, that would kind of ruin the rest of the idea I have going on for this project. So... I'm going to go get these printed up, uh, assembled, and then I can continue on with the design. All right, here are the printed buoy halves. Uh, I printed these in ABS, which I totally forgot how much I hate printing in ABS because this stuff stinks, but these should hold up to the sun. Uh, there's a little alignment pins just made from filament. These will help uh, just align things while I'm gluing them together. I just kind of scuffed them up with some uh, 220 sandpaper. Hopefully help the super glue bond, but I'm just going to load these up with super glue. And squeeze them together, and I have some uh, super glue accelerator to help the bond quicker. So let's see what happens here. Oops, if I open my super glue, I probably could use some uh, ABS slurry to do this, but I don't have any ABS slurry because I haven't printed an ABS in forever. So we're just going to try the old super glue, hope for the best. All right, get this all cleaned up. There's one down. I'm going to do this other one off camera and we'll go from there. So, this is the fun part. This is what I'm going to be using gaps and crack filler by Great Stuff. I've never used this stuff before, so I don't know how much to shoot or what, but I'm hoping uh, any excess just comes shooting out of the end and I can deal with that later and just doesn't actually blow this whole thing apart, but let's find out what's going to happen right here.
Might have been a little excess, but what are you going to do? I want to make sure it's full. Don't know how much that's going to expand still. Let's do the other one. Look at that mess I made. Just gonna leave that for a while and see what happens. Here are the finished buoys. Uh, I ended up uh, cleaning them up and uh, gluing these caps on off camera because with everything I have left on this project to do, this video is probably gonna end up being a little long and I wanted to save some time. But they came out good. They're a little rough still. I'm gonna end up cleaning them up a little more and probably uh, painting them like a bright yellow so they're more visible. But here it is compared to the original. A little bit smaller, just uh, because it's a round body. I did throw them in the sink to give them a flow test, and they passed that. So we're going to continue on with the rest of this project. I'm going to go jump back on the computer and show you the rest of this design. This is the main part of this uh, project. This is my marker buoy deployment system, also known as the depth charger. And let me show you how this thing works. I'll remove this cover. There is a geared motor down here, which connects to this uh, disc cam right here which connects to this push rod, which connects to this buoy pusher. And as the motor's turned on, this thing is gonna start spinning. And you can see how it pushes it forward. And basically these uh, pusher fingers here is gonna push this uh, buoy right off the back of the boat. And once this one drops off, the top one's gonna start to fall down. And once this comes back again, you know, this one will be gone. That one will drop into place. Let me show you how the innards work. Basically in the front there's a uh, buoy retainer that just goes up and down to keep the buoy in place in case my buoy hits any waves or anything it won't drop by accidentally off the back. And when this thing starts coming forward you can see it pushes it down, gets it out of the way and just until the buoy's passed enough and that one will drop off and then as soon as it comes back it's going to get back into position. And how this works, I'm going to push a button and it's going to turn this motor but it's only going to turn it one revolution. As soon as this thing starts coming back around, it's going to hit this button, which is a limit switch, and it's going to stop the motor again until I push the button again. Basically, this thing's going to mount on the bolt like this with the, the nose up a little bit, or the, the ass up a little bit, I should say. This is only a, a, a two marker system, but I could always uh, take this magazine and I could actually uh, extend this up if I wanted like a three shot, but I only need two for now because usually I'm just marking brush piles or the starts and finishes of like a, a brick wall or anything like that but that's how everything is going to work i know a couple of you are probably asking uh but why and uh that's because i can i like making weird stuff and this is kind of weird i don't think i've ever seen anything like this there might be reasons for that but we're going to try it out and see what happens so i'm going to run down and start getting these things uh printed out and then we'll get into assembly All right, here are the 3D printed parts for this project. Uh, obviously, I was just having some fun there with the editing. Uh, 3D printing is not that fast. We kind of wish it was, but it isn't. In reality, this took about, uh, I think, 38 to 40 hours, give or take. Uh, I mean, the base here alone, that was 18 and a half hours. Everything's printed in PETG, I think like at 30% infill. And I print at 60 millimeters a second, so it's a little slower than uh, like printing PLA, but... 
everything came out all right. There's some uh, there's some areas that have some holes in the top. I don't know what happened there. They got some stringing. I usually just uh, take a lighter and burn all the stringing out and clean it up. I'm uh, looking more for function than uh, how pretty everything is. But other than that, I just got to thread a few holes and I'm going to be using uh, heat set inserts on a few things. If you've never seen those, they're just little brass things that are threaded and they get melted into the part. It just makes for a stronger thread. I'm going to use it on areas like where the the push rod connects to the camshaft just so you know that's spinning around moving a lot it'll be a little bit stronger hopefully it holds up but i'm gonna get the everything threaded that needs to be threaded heat search installed and we're gonna go from there start assembly and see if this thing works okay i'll do a quick rundown on one of these uh heat set inserts uh you just use a normal soldering iron to install these uh you can use a normal tip but i made this special one on my lathe out of a bolt basically the heat set insert just fits on there you heat it up and you press it into the plastic uh, pretty simple uh, I'm gonna install a couple of these just to show you how yeah fire up my iron here Make sure it goes in there straight. And there you go, a couple heat set inserts installed. Let me uh, run the rest of them and we'll continue with the assembly. There you go, that should do it. All right, so the first step in assembly is going to be to install the buoy retainer. And basically it's gonna slide in, get mounted through this hole. That's just gonna be the hinge point. And it's gonna mount with a 440 screw. But I think uh, to line this up, I'm gonna use the end of this old paintbrush here first see if I can find the hole I mean that sounds like a personal problem but you know it's kind of awkward to do on camera all right there we go so that's in there so basically I'm just going to try to Pull this out of here without moving the buoy retainer. Drop that screw in there. Screw this in without moving anything. It's easier said than done, I guess. There we go, one buoy retainer. Next thing is, going to be a spring in the bottom here to push this up all the time this fits in this hole this is actually a uh, a quarter 20 hole that I actually printed the threads in and I'm just going to use this little set screw to uh, hold everything in there I'll actually be able to adjust the tension if I have to there we go oh that's a little stiff I might have to cut that spring down Let's give this thing a test. See when this pushes in, that's gonna go down. Oh yeah, that's a little stiff. I think we might have a problem here. Cause that's supposed to go flush. Oh, I see what happens. This is kind of a design flaw. That's the problem with 3D printing plastic bends. All right, so we might have to rectify this a little bit cause that's clearly not going down far enough. 
So I think I'm just gonna have to cut that spring down a bit. So let me try that, see if that works. Get a pair of nippers here. Take a third of it off for now. If I can do this. See if that helps. More tension. Did I miss the spring? Oh, you know what? Spring is too short now. All right, we got some serious design flaws here. We got to look into. Maybe if I hold that down first, put that in there first. Perfect. That might actually work because the buoy's going to press down on that too. So I think that's pretty good for now. We're going to cross that road when we get to it. All right, next thing I got to do is actually install this part with the fingers. These are the little fingers. And I'm just going to push this in here because this is going to mount through the bottom. That's what these slots are for. These are also for water drainage. The only problem now is how to get these bolts in there without dropping them every time. i got to get some pliers. bad. Find my other bolts. Each one of these started. Tighten them up. All right. All right, that should work. If not, I can always uh, reprint that and increase the size of the little. Uh, nub on the bottom of that thing but so far it's looking pretty good Oops, sorry about that all right let me uh, figure out what's next so the next step is going to be to actually install this motor so i uh, pre-wired everything off camera again just to save some time but uh, this is what i'm using this is a 6 rpm geared motor I have a normally closed switch, which just basically means the contacts are always on until you press the button. And then this is just a, a normal uh, on-off momentary uh, micro switch that I'm using for now. So basically, uh, to wire up, power power comes into the switch, goes through the switch to the motor, and back to the battery. And then this switch just wires across the terminals, which uh, when pressed just basically cancels out the limit switch. Uh, for power for now, I am using a, a, a benchtop power supply, which was made from an old computer power supply. So it has like uh, 3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts. It also has a buck converter that goes from 0 to 36 volts. Disregard that 30. That was an error in my part making this thing. But this is just going to simulate the boat battery. So let me uh, tripod up here and I'll show you how this works. I'm going to put the cam disc on just so you can see it spin easier. And remember, there's going to be a little uh, lobe on this cam lobe that pushes this button 
pretty much every time it's powered on, it's going to be on. So we're going to give it power, but it doesn't do anything because basically the cam load would be pushing the button when it starts. So to drop the buoy, I would just push this other button and it's going to basically cancel out the limit switch and start the motor spinning. And then once that cam lobe is off this button, I can let go and it's going to do a complete revolution until it, that lobe comes back and pushes the button again. And then that second buoy is ready to go and I push it again. Start spinning, let's go. And basically the same thing, drops the second buoy. So wiring's pretty basic, nothing uh, extraordinary there. Pretty simple circuit. But I'm going to get this all uh, mounted up in the base next and then uh, we'll see if it actually starts uh, working. All right, let's give this thing another test. Okay, I got everything mounted. Let's see how this thing works. Or if it works, I should say. Looks pretty good. Only thing left to do now is hook that push rod up and uh, see if this thing's smooth enough or not. It was at this point I realized I have to take the whole buoy pusher out to get the screw in for the push rod. All right, I'm gonna give this a test before I go any farther. All right, I have to put those fingers back on there. I did uh, play around with this a little bit. I found a different spring. It seems to work a little bit better, pushes it up higher. So let me get those back on there and we'll do one final test before we finish assembly. All right, now that I got those fingers on there, one more quick test. If I can push the button. 
All right, seems a lot smoother. These uh, fingers actually keep that bottom plate from twisting, so that works good. I think this heat set insert's dragging a bit on the bottom of this underside here, but that's a little rough from where I tore out the supports, but I think it should work fine. So let's get a actual buoy on here and see if it has enough uh, power to push it off. Oh yeah, no problem. So this should be pretty good. So the next thing I have to do is uh, just put the mounts on. These are uh, special mounts that are designed to fit my boat. I just have a piece of angle iron on the back of my transom to stiffen things up. So that's going to mount on there. There's actually a uh, little lock screw that's going to clamp it on the back. And then I just have these little adapter plates that are going to mount on the bottom of the base like this. And I did these uh, adapters separate just in case I have to change the angle. I can just reprint that and not the whole thing. So we're going to see how that works out. And the other last thing I have to do is I just have to cut like uh, three inch sections of this rod just for the, the magazine to mount. So it just pokes in there. So I'm going to go get this cut up, get those uh, mounts put on there, and we'll see how this thing turns out. So this should be the final step of this project. These are the little rods I cut out. They're just aluminum. I uh, polished them up. I cut a little groove in the end because they're going to sit in the base like this. And this little uh, 440 set screw is going to lock it in place. So they just drop in. And then we have our uh, magazine ring and that just drops on top. And once I uh, tighten those up, we're pretty much done at this point. So let me do that. and. Uh, We'll see what this thing does. All right, we're at the point where I'm gonna find out if this thing works or not. Now I have this propped up in the back here with a little block because the transom on my boat is at a 10 degree angle. So if I have this calculated right, that's about how it's gonna sit. Let me get some buoys loaded up here. I'm gonna to have to hold this so it doesn't tip forward, but this is the moment of truth. All right, Houston, we have a problem. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. All right, I think I discovered the problem and it should be an easy fix. Now, how I thought this was gonna work, I envisioned the buoy dropping down onto the top here. And as this backs up, sliding down forward and catching this. And then once that's back far enough, the back would drop down. But as you can see, what's happening is as soon as the buoy drops down, it's already tipping forward and going forward. So I think an easy fix is just going to be to square these off, don't have the ramps. So I'm going to go try that, reprint a couple new fingers, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. All right, the new fingers have been printed and I have mounted them. Here it is compared to the old one. You can definitely see uh, squared that off. I made them much longer just to support that top buoy when it drops. But let's uh, see if this fixes the problem. Get this all loaded up. Hold it in the back again, and here we go, fire one. Looking good so far. Looks pretty good. Let's try it a few more times just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. All right, I'm gonna call that a win. I think uh, the only thing to do now is to get this on the boat and go do some real world testing. Here we are, we are out on the lake and I got the depth charger mounted to the back of the boat. The mounts fit perfect and hold pretty tight, so no worries there. 
So now I just got to see if this thing's going to work in the real world. So I'm going to go find some structure and see what happens. All right, so this is how this is going to work. You're just trolling around looking for some structure. And as soon as you see some structure, like what should be coming up here, see that? So now when you find some structure you want to fish, just come over here, step on the button, and your buoy drops. There we go. Nice little crappy, I think. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Oh, he stole my stole my bait. Let's see here. Open up. Oh, I got you good. <laughs> Get out of my buoy. Oh, you bastard. Winding these up suck. Maybe I'll have to make an automatic winder next. Reloading's easy. Just drop them in. Ready for the next shot. Well, there you go. I think I'm gonna wrap this video up right about here. Uh, I know some of you probably think this is still an unnecessary thing to make, but it was a fun little project and it worked pretty well. So I'm gonna to continue to use it because it worked uh, good for me. I'm lazy. I don't wanna manually uh, bend over, pick up buoys and throw them overboard. That's just not fun. But anyway, I know the fishing portion of this was a little boring. You don't wanna see me catching a whole bunch of crappy all day. So I'll add a little bonus footage at the end of this video, which is something I caught a few weeks ago that was a little more exciting. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one whenever that may be. Oh boy. You ready for this? I know Big Johnny's home. Let's see if he's hungry. Here he comes. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> Let's try this again. There he is. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Big Johnny, maybe. Big Johnny's always fun. I'm drag a little bit. Which way is that going? Here we go. Oh, 
squeezed away from that chair. You got a look at him, big old catfish. That's Big Johnny. Let's go. Come on, buddy. You're all done. Oh. Big Johnny's a little big for my net. Oh. oh, let's get my little lippers here. Come on, big. Come on, big boy. Yeah, channel catfish. No, I let him go. Uh, I don't really like taking these in there for anyone else. Yeah. Let's see, he's about 26, 25. All right, buddy. There you go, buddy. Till next time. Maybe next time we'll try to get Big Johnny on a fly rod.